Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the KN, uh, the car that I've been using as my daily driver for a couple of months now. I've been absolutely loving it, as you've heard in all of my previous content. I've not really had anything bad to say about this car. The fuel economy we could talk about as being a bit of an issue and, and it is expensive, you know, it does around 21, 22 miles to the gallon and likes to visit the fuel pumps fairly regularly. And when you do, it's always well, well over a hundred quid. But apart from that, I've really had nothing bad to say about this car, except one thing, which is the ride quality. Now with mine being the 3.2 V6, it was the lowest model that you could buy for the 955 generation. It didn't come with air suspension as standard and on this particular example, it wasn't specified, which to be honest with you, after going around with Chris at ePorsche a couple of weeks back and talking about sort of the builds that you can expect with these KNs, obviously by not having air suspension, I'm potentially saving myself a number of headaches there with the air suspension components that Chris says at this point, about 20 years into their life, start to go wrong uh, and do go wrong, or maybe even at about 15 years. However, the compromise for not having that air suspension is I do have only one ride setting, one suspension setting, which is as it is. And as it is, for me, feels a bit too firm. As you can see, we're just driving at 25 miles an hour now through town. The road is just a typical British city or town road with bumps and manhole covers all over the place. And the car's a little bit jarring. It's a little bit fidgety, I think is the best word to describe it, and quite distracting. Bumpy enough that I notice it sort of all the time. I've not quite gotten used to it, and it still annoys me enough that I want to do something about it. The other thing with this car as well that I found is that because it has such a sharp and lovely throttle response, when you do find yourself on a particularly bumpy track, it's quite hard not to jolt your foot on the throttle and then make the car accelerate or decelerate. It's a little bit, you know, I want to do something about it if possible. And then a godsend arrived in the form of fellow YouTuber Auto Alex Cars. He actually sent me an Instagram message because he formerly had a KN, I think it was a manual V8, and he isn't using it anymore, and he has a spare set of wheels, which were 18-inch wheels, that he said I was welcome to, to come and get off him, basically. And so I agreed and picked up some 18-inch wheels from his unit, which I currently have at home, which is where we're heading now, because this afternoon I'm going over to good old Quick Fit to have them swapped over for these 20-inch wheels that are on my car now. I'm not expecting it to make a drastic difference, but I'd like to think that having that larger sidewall, I think it's a 55% sidewall on the 18 inch wheels, and it's a 40% on these 20s. I think that should hopefully make the ride just that little bit softer. And it doesn't need to be much softer because what I do get is a really responsive steering and fantastic handling dynamics. And I don't want to lose too much of that. So I think these 18 inch wheels, slightly smaller rim, bigger sidewall should give me what I'm looking for. I'm hoping that's gonna be the case. So I head back home now, we'll load up the car with the 18 inch wheels and then I'll head over to Quick Fit, get them put on and we can have a little look at the differences on, on well, whether it's solved my issue on, on ride quality. Because I think if we can get that nipped in the bud, I think I'm pretty much happy with this car. We are gonna be going back to ePorsche uh, very soon to have some of the works addressed that we flagged up in that previous episode, such as that belt definitely needs doing. I wanna get the cap re-welded or bolted in. There's a list I'm compiling with those guys and we're just trying to find a date now to fit it all in. So that'll be coming imminently, but in the meantime, this wheel change should hopefully just improve the usability of this car for me. So we'll find out anyway, won't we? But before I do go home and load up the car with the new wheels, which I will definitely show you, just want to say thank you to today's video sponsor. I want to say thank you to Carly for sponsoring today's video. Now, whether you're looking to buy a KN or not, I think as a car owner, Carly should be an essential part of your toolkit. I think it is fair to say that with cars like this, or really any old car for that matter, comes a certain type of anxiety. You're never quite sure when the next warning light's going to illuminate or when something's going to break. I like to think that by using Carly, I'm keeping ahead of my car, reducing the chances of any nasty surprises. You can use Carly to conduct vehicle health checks 
subjects helping you to diagnose any potentially hidden or even obvious faults with the car. Plus you'll get access to expert repair guides, live data tracking, and also battery health monitoring. On certain brands of car as well, you'll be able to unlock a host of hidden features using the Carly coding function. All you have to do is download the app, get yourself one of these OBD readers, and then there's a yearly license fee to unlock all of the features we've just spoken about. So while we're at it, why don't we just do a quick diagnostics check on the car. So click connect, plug in the scanner, which I've done, turn on the vehicle's engine, make sure that Bluetooth is on, it's on, press connect. So we'll hit diagnostics and we'll click check for issues. Okay, well, two issues found, which I have to say for a Porsche of this age is pretty good going. They're with the Tiptronic system, which is interesting because remember, I can't get my thing to stay in manual gearing which is something I wanna fix. And this might actually help me identify what the issue is. It says the issue is 1045 selector lever switch. So that would imply it is the micro switch in here, which is what they said at ePorsche it probably is, which is a component that I can order and replace. So that's very helpful. Also, if that's not enough, if I click here where it says search for more information, it will automatically search it online. And here are some videos, which I'm definitely gonna watch later on this very issue. So. If it can't explicitly tell me what the issue is, which it seems to be able to do here, I can at least click through and look at YouTube videos, etc., to work it all out. And then we've got X2A generic communication fault code, which is probably just as a result of the selector lever switch problem. So that's very helpful. I'm gonna clear the system, but I'm pretty sure it will come back up anyway, but it's just good so that when we do the next check, we'll know that if the issue comes back up, it's definitely something that's persistent. That's very helpful. I'm going to probably order that part actually and try and do it myself at some point. But otherwise, just to have some Tiptronic problems, that's pretty good going, I think. It's worth visiting the Carly website to find out exactly what functions you'll be able to access with your specific type of car, as this does vary between models. If you do wanna go ahead and get yourself one of these OBD readers, you can do so now and get 15% off using my link down below and my code in the description. Thanks so much to Carly for sponsoring this video. Now let's get on with the review. Okay, so here we are then. The wheels aha, are in this little storage cubby I use for ladders and things. You might notice there's actually two full stacks of four. Um, that's because underneath are my spare set of Volvo wheels. Uh, I do still have that XC90. It's currently sawned, stored somewhere else, um, but I haven't quite worked out what I'm doing with that yet. Uh, but yeah, here we go. So these are the wheels that came from Alex, which I'm very, very happy with. They're actually on uh, Bridgestones all round, which is good news. I think the tires are quite old, but the tread at least is good. And as you can see here, they're 255, 55, 18. So the smaller rim size, we've got a higher percentage of sidewall, and I think it is a bigger sidewall and uh, narrower too, which uh, I have a plan for these. I'm gonna be changing the tires for certain types of tires, which I'm gonna need for where I want to go with the car and having a uh, slightly narrower width will, will be good for that. The alloys themselves seem in pretty good nick, but I'm not too fussed about that anyway. Let's get these in the KN, take them to quick fit and we'll see what the difference is. Okay, so hopefully this should hold just about. As you'll know if you've been watching the content, my struts are just about still working, but they're on their last legs. So I'm gonna take this load cover out, which of course, because this is a Porsche, it's very easy to do, even easier than on my XC90. It's just so well thought out. And then I'm gonna fold the seats down. There we go. So they will actually go a bit flatter than this, but that should be fine for what I need now. And it's quite embarrassing, really. I don't tend to like really look after my cars cosmetically, but I love this thing so much that I've got a, a rug in the back to protect it because it's my special little Porsche. Uh, so I uh, wouldn't normally do that, but I do like this car. While the boot's just about still holding, I'm gonna try and roll these in. It's waiting to be decapitated by that thing closing by itself. to admit I don't quite know how this is gonna work because when I called quick fit yesterday to arrange this they obviously don't really tend to change wheels over it's not something they they do they do tires so they said they're gonna charge me for wheel balancing 
which is like eight quid a wheel or something. So I said, fine. But I don't know if they're going to like get the wheels out for me and then put the 20 inches back in the boot for me. I'm not quite sure how it's going to work. So it could be a little bit interesting because that's quite, quite hard work. Anyway, I didn't get decapitated by the boot. So that's a bonus, isn't it? So let's take these over now. at quick fit and fair play to them for 32 quid they did indeed take the 18 inch wheels out of the car replace them with my 20 inches and put them back into the boot all very quickly too so no complaints there right so it's the next day as when i left quick fit yesterday it was actually dark so i couldn't continue filming however i did the short drive home and i've driven around a little bit this morning and i'm genuinely very surprised by the results because it's night and day. These 18 inch wheels have made a massive difference to the way this thing drives in general. It is softer as expected. It feels more Range Rover like now. Um, almost like, I don't know, if you've got one pillow and you add another one, there's just that extra layer of cushioning under your head. It feels like that with this car now, but on the road, it feels, dare I say it, supple. Um, certainly in comparison to those 20 inches, they were really crashy. Like now when I go over the same bumps, in fact, we were driving over yesterday on those 20s, it is noticeably softer. Um, genuinely quite surprised with how much difference it makes. For those of you wondering, by the way, why I went to Quick Fit to have them swap the wheels over instead of just doing it at home on my driveway, I didn't really fancy doing it myself because my driveway is a little bit sloped, so jacking up a car is never that ideal. I don't want to jack up this really heavy thing and actually it would take me a long time to undo all the wheels on each corner jack it up take it off and replace and i thought for 32 quid they can just do it so that's why i took it there and actually i'm very happy that i did they're a, a brilliant team down there at quick fit very very impressed with their service but even more impressed with how this thing now drives the only trade-off i've noticed and also i'm a bit surprised how much difference it has made is in the handling it's now not as sharp as it was which is a shame because I do really enjoy the sharpness of the steering in my KN. It's lost a bit of its edge. The same way I suppose that we've got that extra cushion now, it's just there's an extra layer of cushion in the steering if that makes any sense. But all in all I think it's a really nice medium because it's still sharp, still much sharper than the likes of a Range Rover or an X5. You can still sense the Porsche sensation through the wheel, however the ride quality is now much improved and what I would say acceptable. It's not as soft as a Range Rover and it's certainly not as soft as a KN with air suspension, but this ride quality now is more akin to what you would expect from a car like this. And also, what do you think about the look of the car? Because honestly, the 20 inch wheels looked kind of small for this KN anyway. It's a massive thing and it didn't really feel the arches all that much. So I thought these 18s were gonna look hilariously bad, but call me, strange i kind of like the way this thing looks on 18s it's just uh, it reminds me of my first range rover which had small 18 inch wheels on it it just looks that much more rugged and utilitarian and you know like you could take it anywhere like it's a real workhorse for the farm so to speak and that is going to be well kind of relevant considering what i'm planning on doing with this car next so do stay tuned to the channel it's sort of like three phases here because I'm actually preparing the car for an adventure that I have in mind. Changing the wheels over to the 18s was like step one to just see if I prefer the 18 inch wheels really. Step two is coming hopefully next week and then step three will be back at ePorsche getting the final bits done to get this car ready for a bit of an adventure. So do stay tuned to the channel if you're excited to see more KN content and uh, thank you so much for watching if you're not subscribed already and you do enjoy these videos please make sure you hit that subscribe button below we're near to 100k actually and hoping we can hit that in the next few months so thank you ever so much for watching and i'll see you all very very soon